Hey, and welcome back to another video. I'm gonna show you how to integrate Autogen with Lava. No, 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 not that Lava, this Lava. And I'm gonna show you how to use it in RunPod for the first time, but the same setup can be done locally for no charge the exact same way I'm doing it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is set up the project. And like I said, I'm gonna be using RunPod, which just allows me to install everything on a remote uh, remote server that is much better than my machine. It's gonna cost me less than a dollar to show you in this video how it's done. But as I said, and I wanna iterate, you can also do this locally if your machine permits it, and it will cost you nothing. The first thing is go to runpod.io then go ahead and sign up if you haven't already or just log in if you already have an account. Once you log in, the first thing I would do is here's the homepage. So at the top right, there will pro you'll probably say $0 for you. So just click on that and then you'll be at the billing page and then you can go ahead and just put like two or three dollars in. Or if you want, maybe just put five just to be safe. Now go ahead and go back to the homepage and on the top left, we're gonna see GPU cloud. So just click that. And then you can select from one of these servers. So what we're going to select is this one right here for 79 cents an hour. You might be able to go with something cheaper, but this one uh, worked well for me installed and it actually ran pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is I want to hit deploy. And then when you see this screen, there is a customized deployment here. Now, what you need is for this container disk, it only starts you out with 20 gigabytes. Whenever you install everything, you're going to need more. So you can may, maybe be safe with 50, but I just used 100 just to start out with. Now I'm going to select set overrides. And now the next thing we need to do is search for a template. All right, once you come here, there's a couple that you can choose from, but you're more than welcome to just hit this first one for RunPod PyTorch 2.1. And then just make sure you have Start Jupyter Notebook checked. You don't necessarily need the SSH terminal access checked, but it doesn't hurt to go and have a check. Then hit continue, and then we want to go and hit deploy. And now we're just going to wait for it to finish deploying your pod. And now we know it's running because it says running right up here. And once you see that, uh, more on the left side of the screen, you'll see a connect button. Go and click that. And then there's a couple things here. We're not going to connect to JupyterLab just yet. We're going to wait till we install everything. So what we need to do is click the start web terminal. Once this is started, you're going to click the connect to web terminal. And once you do this, it's going to give you access to the machine. Okay, now what you can do is you can go ahead and CD into the workspace. So LS is to just list out everything that's uh, in this path on the machine. And then you can hit CD for change directory and then just go to your workspace. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to start installing everything to make this work. Well, on the GitHub page, it just gives you everything you need, but I'm just gonna go through it so you can know exactly what to do. The first thing we need to do is clone the repository. So go ahead and copy this, go back, to the terminal and then you're just going to copy this and hit enter and now it's going to clone the lava project onto the machine okay now if you hit ls great now we see lava so go ahead and cd or change your directory into lava and next thing we can do is just go ahead and upgrade pip they recommended doing that so it doesn't hurt anyways it just takes a second to run and then we're going to type pip install dash e which stands for editable and this just allows us to edit the code for any packages in that we have installed in this directory. So go ahead and type that. Go ahead and press enter. All right, once that's done, the next thing we're going to do is connect to a Lava controller. So I'm going to hit uh, clear so you can see a little better. So we're going to paste this in, hit enter, and then it's going to connect to a server with this host and port. And once you see Uvicorn running on the HTTP server, then we're good to go. But we need to open up another terminal. So go back to run pods. You can just click connect to, term to web terminal again. We're going to open up another one. And now I just pasted this into the terminal. And basically what this does, it's going to connect to the controller. And we want to download this Lava model here so that we can use for this example. This will be in the description so you can just copy it. And once you've done, just click enter. And it's going to take a while, but it's going to start downloading everything, as you can see here. So I just want to go over what we're going to be doing next while this finishes. We're going to be connecting to the Jupyter Notebook terminal inside RunPod and we're going to be installing Autogen. They're going to be connecting to the local host where the Lava model is installed. And then we're going to be running some agents that are going to ask it some questions and we'll see what the responses are like and see maybe how good the model is. All right, when that's done, you'll know whenever it says Uvicorn running on this HTTP port 40,000. Okay, great. Now let's go back to my pods, connect to Jupyter Lab, And then once you're here, you're going to click Python 3 kernel. Okay, 
Now it's going to open up a brand new notebook for us. And the first thing we need to do is install Pi Autogen. So pip install Pi Autogen. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to hit run and they'll say the requirements are satisfied. And the next one is a library called replicate. So pip install replicate and then go ahead and hit uh, run and it's going to install all these for you as well. All right, now let's just paste this code in and let's quickly go over what's happening here. Well, we have a config list, which is connected to this Lava model. The API key is none because we don't need one. The local host or the base URL is 0.0.0.0, .0 and the port 10,000. And this is what we connected to the controller. Okay, and then we have an image agent, which we call a, we have as a Lava agent. And then the name, just image explainer and uh, auto reply and the LLM config. And then we have the user proxy, which is just a user proxy agent. And then we have use Docker, set to false, okay? Because so, we're not gonna be using Docker here. So we need to set that to false and the human input mode to never. And that's basically it, okay? And then the we're going to initiate the chat with the image agent from the user proxy. And what I wanted to do is describe this autogen framework. So if we just go to uh, open this up really quick, and this is basically when you go to autogen's GitHub, this is gonna be uh, one of the main images that you see. So now we want to ask it to describe that for us. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it gives. So as you can see here, we're asking it to describe this framework, which is this image that we gave it. And what did it give back to us? Well, it says uh, the Autogen framework diagram shows a system for conversations between multiple agents. It does, uh, shows flexibility, uh, customization, various conversation patterns. There, yeah, there's a few of those. So that's, I mean, that's correct. Um, the diagram illustrates the different components and connections within the framework, including conversational agents and their interactions and blah, 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 flexible and customizable. Okay, so if we go back here, I think it's all flexible uh, conversation, um, customization, you know, I think it probably just saw some of the keywords and, but I mean, there are uh, different uh, varying levels of agent chat. Uh, it didn't really say anything about joint chat or the hierarchical chat, maybe just group them saying that there were various ones, but either way, okay. That was simple, right? Let's try another one. Okay, now what I did was I found a UML diagram, a somewhat complex one, and I'm asking it to describe it. And I'm going to see what it does first, and then we'll look to uh, see if it was accurate. Okay, so what it did was it says the, it says this UML diagram, of course, uh, includes number of classes and the relationships, including the structure and organization of the system. Uh, says there are 13 boxes and 11 lines connecting them. Okay, that was very generic. Okay, so here's the UML diagram. I'm pretty sure there's more than 11 lines here, and I think I counted um, 12 boxes. I, I can't really count, so I could be off. Okay, this time around, I asked it to give me the names of the methods in this UML diagram, and it kind of just said, uh, represented, it just kind of gave me what I'm supposed to look out for. Okay, not exactly what I wanted. Let's try another example. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, this is actually a Where's Waldo. I just I wanted to see if it could describe it for me. I know it's supposed to have some object detection. I tried to ask it, where is Waldo? And it didn't really give me anything. It basically just described the image for me. It, it, it does take place in the snow, uh, like a landscape. Um, and, you know, it does have here among the group, a couple of dogs accompanying their owners. Okay, great. So if we look at it, you know, it is obviously a snowy landscape. Uh, where are the dogs? Uh, I think it thinks the reindeer I think it thinks they're reindeer or dogs, whatever, that's fine. Um, right here is Waldo, by the way. And, you know, it was kind of overall for like decent, like just describing the image for me. And that's what Lava is for. But something interesting that it can do, especially with Autogen, is we can give it a couple images, then have it compare. Let's see how good it does with that. So the first thing here is an image of this dog here, you know, cute dog. So we have it, whenever I ran it, it says, features a small shaggy brown dog sitting on the floor next to a pair of black shoes. Um, wearing a collar, looking at the camera. Okay, great. Now, now what I can do is I can send it another message afterwards with another breed of dog and say, of these, which one barks less? Let's go ahead and run this time. This time I said the dog in the image is a small brown puppy with curly hair. Yeah. And then the next question was, what is the breed of the next dog in the image and which one barks less? They took the next one, which it is a husky. The next one is the image of a husky dog. So also known as Siberian Huskies, uh, known for their eyes, fur, um, and reputation for being vocal. 
Huskies typically bark less than other breeds. However, however, it's important to note that they each have their own behaviors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's just basically describing the husky next saying that's not barking. So it didn't really tell us. It kind of it kind of gave us um, that huskies typically bark less than other breeds. That's basically the answer it gave us here, and which is fine. And just so you know, I have sixty two cents left. I think I started with like a dollar thirty seven at the beginning of this video. Um, so it didn't really quite cost me a dollar to run this, and it's been close to an hour. Just so you know, it doesn't cost too much if you just want to try some things out on RunPod. Well, this was just a simple example of integrating Autogen with Lava, and you can run this locally on your computer. I did use RunPod, but as you saw, it cost pretty cheap, but it was just because I could have a much better computer running remotely to test this. Here are some more videos about Autogen. I also have a link in the description to my GitHub and a newsletter that I send out every Sunday at noon. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time.